Hello and welcome to our afternoon FOMC Minutes live show. Remember to tune into the last 15 minutes so you can see a little breakdown because we are not going to have a YouTube video tonight. So make sure you are getting that breakdown um, at the end of this video so we can see some direction possibly for tomorrow. But remember tomorrow we have another one of those rocks in our stream with the PPI. So we get more data tomorrow even after the FOMC. We still have to be trading like water out there. And the other part I just wanted to mention was if you want those daily expected moves before the open tomorrow, before the live show tomorrow, we are going to make those and put those out on Patreon tonight. So if you're back on Patreon um, or if you're over on Patreon, if you're not on it, get a part of it right now because it could be a good opportunity to get those daily expected moves for tomorrow. And then on Friday, we'll have those daily expected moves for every stock that we cover. I just wanted to point out on the spy here, this is a very pivotal moment, right? This is very, very huge because we have this going on right now. We are testing the bottom of our daily expected move right before 15 minutes away from some big news, the FOMC minutes. So if we see that as bad news, we can break through this level. And this is where that selling can really escalate, possibly even heading towards the weekly or the monthly expected move. But the likelihood here, remember that as we are outside of this, you still have that 68% chance to come back by end of day and you're not outside the weekly yet. So we easily could gravitate towards this. You'd have to say the direction for this is down at this moment, taking out this low negative trend is solidified here. So um, rolls up positive. Guess what? Crosses over negative territory. We haven't gone positive again. So welcome, welcome back. Make sure to like it as we're coming in. That way plenty of people can see it. Pops up on their page and everything like that. But hello, Double Dark, Trump Town. What up? I mean, my calls are getting clapped. Yes, and that's where you want to have those st uh, tight stops. On mine, I had Apple with the stop right at this low down here, and I had TLT with a stop up in this area up here, right down here. Okay, so that was my stop right at the open, pretty much that was taken out within the next hour. Now, the thing with this, we're coming down into some support now. Look at us test that to the to the dot and then start to head up. Remember, this is our little trend coming down inside that wedge. So now we're testing that level. Uh, before we even got off stream, we said it could probably test something like 90 to 89, somewhere in here, uh, somewhere down in here. So there's a 10 year bond auction an hour ago and it did not go well. Yeah, it did not. It went very, very bad. <laughs> Bye, girls. Have fun. Have fun. Tell Abuela I say hi. Navid, welcome, welcome, welcome. Let's see if volatility, volatility up 10% right now. Okay, so we have that. Um, if this holds, we would have that chance for a 85% uh, chance for an update of the next two trading sessions for the SPY crossed over on the day on the uh, two hour MACD here. So if that negativity comes in initially, look for some kind of divergence. But if that starts to break out of here, might mean some bad, bad news. We might see this dollar keep going up. We might see these yields keep going up. So that's something to pay attention to. Now, one thing I was noticing here, right, this this divergence up here on the MACD, but take that with a grain of salt, right? Because, um, you know, we could just see whatever posted from FOMC. At this point, you'd have to say with the inflation numbers still staying high, not looking the best overall. So give me one minute here and I'll be right back. All right, we're back. I was just saying bye real quick. Lowest expected move for today. We're at it right now for the SPY. Just so you're aware of that, we are at it for the SPY right now. Um, the Qs, I, I believe they're they're not even down towards it. So a little bit like the other day, right? The, the Qs not coming down to their daily, but the SPY is. So the likelihood for a bounce here is higher than the likelihood for it to break down further. But... Um, we do get FOMC minutes in about 12 minutes, and that, that easily can just escalate things. So we just want to see, is it breaking down, retesting, things like that? Maybe we go into like a 15-minute. Okay, we're going to see curling up, right? We see the divergence down here, so 30-minute. You see the flatness down here, but you have divergence at this point. So if you can gain some steam here, you actually can see a recovery. Apple, one thing about Apple, right? Flagging again, right? So we're seeing that flag again. Now, is that going to turn into anything? Well, you have that divergence still here. You're just waiting for that to confirm, rejecting at this moment. So you would need that to show some strength going forward. 
uh, cues here, just just same similar thing, right? You got not necessarily divergence though. So you have divergence on the spy and the cues not gonna break down. So the difference between the spy and the cues could come in. Maybe the cues kind of hinting like people wanna buy right now. Uh, gold, let's see what gold's doing. This will affect gold. It's starting to really still flag out at this point, not seeing an upward move, even with those bigger inflation numbers. You know, when inflation goes up, I would I would expect more people to hedge against it. But I think we're waiting on what the FOMC is going to say, right? Well, they're probably waiting on FOMC before anyone wants to jump into this. They read the data, right? We're still at high levels, still a lot of hedging going on. And then we'll see if that can turn back around. Bitcoin popped. Now we do have a halving for Bitcoin coming right now. You guys know I like my four hour charts. Look at that four hour down towards the center line. Remember, crosses up positive territory, boom, positive move, breaking out of some structure here, right? Now we're retesting that same area. So we'll have to see if that's going to come with some uh, good strength here. But this needs to just curl up, go positive, and you're most likely making another move higher here for Bitcoin. So pay attention to that going forward. We can kind of look through some of these Tesla dropping off pretty significantly. Uh, let's just do 30 minute charts just so we can get some ground here. Now, Tesla is 30 minute at the center line, right? So we can see some positivity here, but you can see we have we have the potential to go deeper into negative territory. So a lot of crossroads coming, right? If this rolls down, negative territory is right there for Amazon. But what if this just continues to go up now? Guess what? You're in positive territory. So you can see a positive trend start or continuing here, right? This is all positive trend. Um, so it's one thing I would say, NVIDIA, this thing flagging out, looks like it wants to um, try to head higher as it goes positive here. If that rolls over, that might be pretty bad because you might start taking out the weekly and see some rapid selling. Uh, AMD, never able to confirm this divergence at this point, but look at that setup that is there. If that happens, boom, you get some strength. That curls up. We know there's two hour divergence down here as well. So you can see a big move from AMD if we get some good news. That's going to be the key thing here. Meta, this is kind of trickling up, buying right by the center line. This doesn't look the best. Looks like it could make another ABC move down, right? A, B, C move down. Then we'll pay attention at these levels down here. So I do have my weekly ranges up and all that good stuff for these individual stocks. Um, looks like we could go down to as almost as low as 500 on this. So 501, maybe this point right here is something to pay attention to. Um, the point I'm talking about right in this area right here, we might want to pay attention to this low if we see some downward pressure. We got about nine minutes left. So looking at Microsoft, this one, you need to hold up here. You don't want to break through this. So you need this to turn up and go positive if you want to see that strength come in. Google, another one, beaten down a little bit, but no, no crazy selling here. If this curls up, positive territory, maybe we get a reaction up like this. And then PPI rips that away. Maybe we get a reaction like this and then um, bank earnings rip this away. So this is something to pay attention to. Netflix going forward, right? We beat down. We're not near the center line on the 30 minute anymore. We took out this level. People could say double top. So when we take out this level, people might be thinking, hey, this has to go down to 600. Well, good news. It'll turn up. Bad news. Well, you're going to build up towards that center line for a moment here and turn back down. SMCI looks like pretty flaggy here notice where are we right towards that center line so we could break down from here that would make a lot of sense maybe a divergence forms by end of day that's the stuff we're going to be paying attention to today volatility is starting to drop off right before that um news comes out so uh we're just seeing just now some red i'm not saying it's dropping off like completely or anything like that i'm just saying um we have the potential here to roll down right test these levels but as of right now you have to say it's scooping all this up what if that's just a handle and we see that explode tomorrow because ppi was really bad last time right it was 0.6 so if it comes in at the previous at 0.6 and we're expecting 0.3 that could be very very worrisome hyg hasn't seen that buying back up yet so it's reacting to the first data reacting to that bond auction right and then now we have to see, can this rebuild? Can this rebuild with this divergence down here? That's what I'd be paying attention to. So pivotal moment for the SPY. So I think we should watch the SPY during this, maybe even go down into a 15 minute or something like that. See if we're able to gain some ground after getting that news here in about seven minutes. So make sure to like and subscribe, do all that good stuff.
Buy or sell gold. Um, gold at these levels kind of hard to treat as an investment. You would want some kind of beat down before you get into gold, in my opinion. I personally would wait for a beat down. I would wait for something to pull us back a little bit, see that cross back up into positive territory on the daily, get above the RSI center line and things like that, and then take that investment. But that's if inflation is going to continue. Hopefully we get a nice dump. I took a nice dump today, so I, I think it's likely. <laughs> no. Is Powell talking? Not that I see. He's not talking. He's talked after every single FOMC minutes, actually. I'm I'm pretty sure. Um, this is one of the one of the ones he's not. So that is something to take in. Yeah, no, no speech, anything like that. Fed speakers coming out tomorrow, a bunch of those. Fed speakers coming out Friday, a few of those. And then we'll get data next week that could cause some bounces, right? Retail sales always coming in higher. People see that as, oh, the economy is still strong. We know that leads to more inflation. The inflationary play is still there. So if gold got that beat down, right? We were talking about gold. Gold's way up here. It's starting to flag out. It could go higher. But what if that actually pulls back for a few days and then we get something like retail sales that's good and then we see, oh, Infl and that inflation play comes back in and we see that tick up right around there. So that's what I'd pay attention to, but very, very important moment for the SPY. So we're going to watch this very closely. Weirdly enough, you do have that divergence down here on the RSI. You see this kind of moving upward while the price action heading down here. So that's something to pay attention to as well. But we have to see core inflation didn't come in good, didn't come in good year over year, didn't come in good month over month, didn't come in good for the inflation rate month over month or the year over year. Year over year really kind of ticking up here. We were expecting that tick up, but my goodness, that is not good. But it's it's in line with um, the previous. So people won't see that as the worst news. The worst news would be if now they react to that data and tell us, hey, you know, we might have to leave rate raises on the table. He never speaks when it's a uh, release of the minutes. Actually, I've, uh, last time I believe he did, actually. Yeah, last time he actually did. TLT, yeah, TLT is hitting a port an important point as well. So this is where we were talking about this morning. You get that reaction all the way down to this level. Now you're going to see on the 15 minutes, it's going to take some work to get back. So you're, you're looking for a good reaction here is what I would say. This two hour did cross. You still have those divergences down here. Notice the two hour. Even though we saw this dram dramatic drop off, you still have those divergences here, here. Even if you go all the way back, right? We have it like at this point as well on the MACD and RSI. So a lot of divergences here saying TLT can rip. Will that be a flight to safety? Do they mention something to do with Iran and the Middle East and that kind of thing? We'll have to see. But they usually don't put a lot into the FOMC minutes there for us. We'll have to see going forward. But if they mention some kind of rate cut in any way, we can probably see the 10 years start to top out, head back down. So something to pay attention to. I think the main thing you want to watch is the SPY, see the reaction, see the wicks at this level. The wicks at this level look pretty good. You have divergence on the uh, RSI, but not necessarily the MACD. So it would be a good level to bounce from. Doesn't mean we have to. People getting excited right before the FOMC. Did that get leaked or something like that? But people get excited excited before the FOMC. Uh, yikes. Tesla, you're still in those puts. This is the opportunity to bounce. That's right, I got a pounder of Dr. Pepper for this one, guys. It's going to be pretty intense. Remember to like this video and stick around to the end because we won't be putting out a YouTube video tonight. And if you want those daily ranges before market open, right, we're still going to be live tomorrow. So you can get those daily ranges um, right at the open tomorrow from this channel. So make sure to tune into the live video tomorrow. But if you want those tonight before anything starts, uh, yeah, just join the Patreon down in the description because... That's going to be where I post them tonight. And I'll post it for the SPY and the Qs on there. And then on Friday, we're doing all of the daily ranges, right? I feel like Friday, having those daily ranges will really help us out, especially when we have something big, bank earnings and things like that. If we don't have a meaningful 
pullback blow off top incoming and that's actually a very good uh point here amd kind of showing you that giving you 30 minute divergence two hour divergence at the same time apple kind of telling you that giving you 30 minute two hour divergences all across here so there's potential now you don't necessarily like you know this 30 minute the recent one very flat on the rsi you can see that going up so the rsi we want to follow that for a moment here notice this about apple right at the center line on the rsi for the 15 minute here so pay attention to that 30 minute divergence is there as well but look at that we're getting a fight between the bulls and the bears right before the info everyone trying to guess which way this is going we're not going to guess we're going to react we know if they mention anything that's going to pull those rates down all right, we're probably going to see some upward price action if they pull them up, if they boost them back up, say there's no rate cuts on the table or anything like that. Mm, going to be a little rough for the market, right? I'm going to guess it goes up, but it also could go down. <laughs> That's actually how we talk on this channel sometimes. We're like, it looks like it wants to go up, but here is how it would break down. That way we're open to both sides. Being aware of both sides is a very good thing as a trader. Then you can flip the script. Philip Tyler, thank you for subscribing earlier, by the way. I didn't notice that, but thank you for subscribing. And this would be where they cover those shorts, right? This makes sense for people to cover shorts here. Everyone's options are toast. I don't know if it will be sideways. You have volatility higher. So if, if you're going to see sideways price action, you know, that can cause volatility to go down a little bit and then maybe you get that pop later. But uh, usually if you're seeing that down, you want it below. Well, is it above 16 still? It's right at 16. If it's below 16, I'd say sideways price action could be there. OK, 1 p.m. Let's go check on this stuff real quick. Let me know what you guys think of this release that's going on right now. Left the Fed funds rate steady. Fifth consecutive meeting. In line with market expectations. Let me see if I can read some of this. Policy still plan to cut interest rates three times this year. That is kind of crazy. Um, let's see how the yields are actually reacting to that. Plot also indicated three cuts in 2025, one fewer than in December, and three more reductions in 2026. Meanwhile, US GDP growth is seen higher in 2024. See if they mention inflation. PC inflation forecasts were kept unchanged for 2024. Interesting. But were raised for 2025. While the core rate is seen higher this year, 2.6 versus 2.4, while forecasts were left unchanged for 2025 at 2.2, the unemployment rate is seen lower at 4%. I mean, this could be considered just with that statement of still planning for three rate cuts. We actually could see some kind of reaction. Um, in the bond market to head up from here, kind of pull back those yields. Remember, SPY is the one we ought to watch. If this just starts to break through this level, that's where we need to really pay attention. But we're seeing some upward moves here. Bonds not really moving with that, though. Maybe bonds aren't convinced and they want to see that PPI data tomorrow. So maybe you're right in saying we just move sideways from this. Now let's look how other things are reacting. Is NVIDIA getting another breakout to the upside? It could come pretty soon. AMD, is that starting to buy back up? No real reaction from AMD. Meta starting to buy back up here. Look at that 30 minute cross positive territory. It's positive now, so we'll have to see. Microsoft, this one needs to buy back up right now. And Google, this was the one we were looking to turn up on the 30 minute. This one could have a good move um, all the way up into like 160 or something like that. I mean, I would I would personally say they mentioned the Fed rate cuts again, three of them. They actually said three. They didn't say some. They didn't say December. They said three rate cuts this year still. Yeah, Google, I'd pay attention once we get up towards 160. which means they know something is broken. That very well could be so. So yeah, TLT should see a reaction up from this news, but it's not. So it's kind of like, what if what if the bond, what if bonds don't buy up? 
and bring these yields down, that puts banks under more and more pressure. But yeah, you're you're right in saying nothing, Burger. I would really pay attention. Let's let's chill for a little bit, watch watch for an hour while this is kind of thought about, and then see what the decision is by end of day. <clears throat> And the fact that they're saying, oh, we're going to cut three times wouldn't mean they think is uh, something's broken, but they're showing those rate cuts are there if they need them. Now, that being said, if they're going to cut because something is broken, it's going to cut more dramatically, most likely, than one time here, one time there, one time there. It's going to be like three all at once, um, three all at once. They might cut very dramatically. But tell me what you guys think. Kind of a kind of a nothing going on right now. Ten year actually getting going up from there. Dollar looking like it's starting to drop off. So now we're probably seeing some kind of pop in the spy. There it is. See if this thirty minute can curl up positive territory. You have divergences down here as well, so you almost have those divergences confirming. Bad news for the market. We can check on IWM. Like I said, this one broke down, right? Through some structure, through some head and shoulders plays here, right? Head and shoulders playing out. Um, we could see further downside, but I, I'd expect some kind of retest, maybe something like this. And up to this area. Apple starting to creep up, starting to creep up just barely. DLT not getting that creep up just yet. You still have that divergence here now. So now you just ignore this one. This one didn't play out. Boom, you want to play this one. Don't have that in the recent, recent price action, but you do have it across here. Volatility really starting to come down. I would just, I would really have expected this, uh, this 10 year yield to react a little bit more. I mean, I mean, we, we, you know, the bond market rose the two year, by the way, all the way almost to 5%. That is so wild. Gaslighting us. No way they're doing three cuts. They can't. They can't. Notice they don't put a date on that or anything because inflation's higher. They can't put a date on it. I think they are, uh, they're trying to do the save game, right? And now they're, we're going to get a bunch of, uh, fed talkers out and, uh, they're probably going to all say the same thing. Yeah, we still see cuts now. We still see cuts now. Are you taking calls on TLT? I might take a, I, I mean, I might scale, like take a little position here, actually. Just to see, because I feel like the reaction will be big if they get those Fed speakers to come out. Now we have structure, too. So we have left. Head. Maybe we get that right shoulder. Then we see this thing come up to here. I think 94 is a good level for... Uh, or TLT. Maybe just this gap fill at 94.50. That being said, I mean, they're really just, I mean, they said something that should bring the yields down, but they're not coming down. So bond market right now is uh, calling their bluff. Like you said, they're, they're gaslighting the bond market, not giving in. Uh, I'm going to take, I took a small position. I took a small position in TLT. PPI, remember, PPI was really, really bad last time. It was 0.6 over 0.3 or something like that. That's like double. So if it comes in anywhere below, like at consensus 0.3 or something like that, which is what's expected for tomorrow, that would be a, a good reaction. I'm still trading in, trading out, right? I'm getting in, getting out. So what do I do? Okay, now I have a point. I have a point where I buy. Just bought some. Boom. This point right here is going to be my stop. If I get a move up here like this, well, then I'm going to put my stop right here. If I get a move up like this, I'm going to put my stop right up here. Biggity, biggity bags. Hard to auction when nobody has money. And, and yeah, the auctions have been like horrible. But um, <laughs> we, we probably should look if the Fed's going to pump money back into the system. By buying some bonds from Janet Yellen. Kind of a weird moment though. But you can see fear coming down a little bit. Let's look at some other indications. Let's look at high yield growth. That thing bouncing just a little bit. Spy holding up above its daily expected move. Q's 
holding up, but this is pretty flaggy, right? So we'll pay attention to that going on into tomorrow. I think the last hour of the day is going to be uh, very important. It seems people don't know what to think now, right? Now you get the confusion, right? So you had one piece of bad news. That would be that the fact that inflation is still high, uh, coming in pretty much at like the previous month. And then you just got kind of some good news, honestly, if you want to, cons I mean, good news for regular people, bad news for people who know that when they cut rates, it leads to a crash. Eventually, usually six to 12 months after the full cutting of rates, you'll see some kind of recession. Uh, but as of right now, you'd say, hey, if someone who is wanting rate cuts hears we're going to have three rate cuts again, which they weren't saying for a couple months there, they're saying some, maybe one in December. Now they came out, they said three. So technically, um, that's what people want to hear. Hey, T, thank you for subscribing. Appreciate you being here. You bet I could touch. Well, can someone tell Spy that I have calls and I bet it can't touch 504 today? 504 is very unlikely for today. It is very, is it good news? No, what you need to think of is they probably know something that we don't. The data was bad and they're still going to cut the rates, which tells you there's probably some something going on in the banking system. And we're going to hear some of that on Friday. So on Friday, we're going to get those earnings and they might give forward projection. They might give forward guidance. They might talk about the future of the banks that that are reporting. Right. So we might see this do this over tomorrow and then see that just completely ripped away so we got to pay attention to friday uh and yeah any distress in the middle east war we're most likely we could see a flight to safety that could be what the bond market maybe is is saying with if it starts to pop from here flight to safety but as of right now they they need to start pricing in those cuts again right now we're not pricing in the cuts at this moment Are we? Or are we? They held it at five point two five, right? They held it up here. I'll have to look at this and maybe I'll come back in the morning with some good info, but for now, TLT, you are not looking looking hot right now. Let's we'll see if I get stopped out right away. If PPI comes in hot, then TLT will go down. If PPI comes in in expectation or even lower, then TLT will go up most likely. God. I got into a couple of spy calls just to feel something. That is so funny. Well, I mean, if you just want to feel something, I mean, this is the area where you could bounce from. I think PPI, I mean, you just had this come in at the same as last time. So what if PPI comes in hot again? Well, then game over. I don't think any, I mean, I think plenty, but I don't try to come up with it before i just say hey this looks like the good play tlt look like the good play for today i have my stop in place that didn't work out lost a little bit now i can scale back into it and see about tomorrow if i'd like but continuing that same play all i have to do is maybe go look at a certain stock right look for the something that's in a negative trend even apple right apple looks like it wants to bounce but right now you're flagging you're getting close to the center line so this negative trend can continue Oh gosh. And this one this one looked good by the way. So the inflation play is still starting to add up here, right? Cup and handle, boom, cup, handle. Okay, we had a higher 15 minute. Make sure that divergence doesn't play out to anything. But two hour beat down looks like it could cross positive territory. We could see this moving higher. I'm sure gold might start to move higher from this news. Interesting gold isn't. So wait for this 30 minute to cross. That would be very, very cool.
This one here, triple divergence at the high here on the 30 minutes. So you are close to that center line. We can get a push higher if we can cross up. Two hour cross down into, and we'll see if that can go negative. Right now you're getting that first sign, but these divergences up here look pretty good. So we could be seeing something break down from here, but it would make total sense if the 30 minute just curls up, positive territory, stay with the trend, right? Still in a positive trend. Well, we're starting to dip negative, so you need that to turn around right here to see some upside. And Willis Addison, thank you so much for donating $2 to the Super Chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate you. Oil, starting to see a move higher with this, so oil might want to look on a two-hour or something like that. Look at that, curling up, could go positive here. That's something to pay attention to. Look on the daily side, still hasn't crossed over, so that, that momentum is still positive and above um, the line here on the MACD, so... This could just be all the beat down we get. We see this actually had a higher for oil. That's not looking good um, for our gas prices, guys. Gap up tomorrow morning. I mean, that's only if the PPI is good. Remember, PPI is coming out uh, an hour before the open. Hour before the open, PPI comes out. So you, you want to be a little careful. You can get this stuff really ripped away. I was lucky enough for TLT that it didn't fully tear away below this low right away in the day. I was able to stop out. If it would have gapped down to here, I would have lost a lot more. But my loss today was on that trade, uh, about 22%. That's perfectly fine. You can't win all the time, you know? I've been doing very good for the last month or two, so I'm not complaining by any means, and I just have to wait for the next trade setup, try not to get angry or anything like that, fight against this. Right now, yields are going up. They did mention some cuts. Maybe that reaction comes by end of day. Seems no more downside today. Yeah, TJ, that makes sense though, right? If we go look at the, the SPY here, this is what we expect for the day, and we already hit that multiple times, right? We hit it twice down here. So you'd say most likely we get some kind of positive reaction or it just keeps staying in this area, right? If it stays in this area to, uh, by end of day, that would actually be worrisome because you can roll this down. See the 15 minute, what if this just stays in this area and then we get new ranges tomorrow and we go test the bottom range and it's right around this weekly. <laughs> Not leaning towards that, that would mean, oh, sorry, that would mean TLT is going to break down dramatically. That would mean TLT is going to keep breaking new lows. What I want to see on TLT, right, this is a negative trend. This is a negative trend on the 15-minute. If that can build up, kind of flag out, drop again, build up towards the center line, drop again, easy plays. Risk management is the most important anyone can read a chart. Exactly. You have to be willing to, you have to know you're not going to win all the time. There's no trader in history that has been 100 for 100. You're going to be, your goal is to be what? Like 65 for 100. Your goal is to be 70 for 100. I'm usually right around 75 uh, for 100. So that means I just have to be risk averse. I have to be risk managed, AKA when things like this do happen, I get out before the flush. This right here, I'll take 22%. This right here would be a loss of 60%, 70%. That's what you don't wanna go through. So this right here looking a little bit better. Oh, Tommy, but you think it's a bad time to purchase a home? Yes, I live in Texas. Just wondering if homes will go down later in the year. So something about homes, if you can be patient for the next couple of years, I think you're going to see the potential for these housing prices to look pretty good, actually. I think you're going to see, especially if you're in Texas somewhere that's flooding, like here where I'm at, we don't see a ton of fluctuation where the housing market sees a 50% drop in other cities. This city usually sees like a 20% drop because they don't go insane in the housing market here. But we're coming up into a, a very important level here. This could bounce. This is the housing sector, by the way. Look at that drop off. So not looking good, testing the 50, um, testing this line down, down in here, this area down here. What if we see some kind of pop up and see that breakdown? I, I think this good shot that in about a year or two, it's going to be much better to buy a home. We're going to see some kind of credit crisis in the housing market and the banking sector, all that good stuff. That's going to cause the prices of these homes to go down. Sellers are going to increase, which means the buying power is with the buyer, aka instead of having to pay 20% more to get the house because you're competing against five other buyers, now you're going to be able to 
maybe you know give 20 percent 10 percent less than what they're asking for just so they can sell that home i think that is coming very very soon but it could take two years to get there and then the best part about that is when that happens most likely the yields will be done right we're going to go through some kind of deflationary event that causes the yields to break down and you'll get a lower yield as well so if you see a great price on a home now if sellers start to increase you can get that and just refinance in a year or two And yeah, these, I mean, interest can go up. It's going up today, right? So um, not surprised by this. I'm just saying this is a very bad line to cross. 4.495, very, very bad. 4.5, very, very high for uh, the 10-year at least. Yes, PPI was higher. It was much higher. PPI is much higher, JW. That's why you have to take this and immediately when you buy something like TLT, right? I'm trying to play some big upside here, um, but immediately I put a stop in place. Immediately, right? I have this right here. Actually, And you guys like the video for risk management. We're putting stops in place. We're being good traders. We're good. All right, so now we have a stop down at this level down here, right around 90.05. So pretty much it's like once I start to lose, like, I don't know, 5 10%, it'll just get me out. I'm going to be really quick with it. Um, so pretty much now this is going to do this. If it doesn't do that and it comes below this area, well, then if this breaks, I'm, I'm going to be worried. We could be going through, hey, maybe the bond market's going to fix the problem by just like raising those rates completely up, uh, causing the banks a lot of stress, but fixing our problem. Now that would cause some bank failures and we're going to probably go into recession if that happens. And then the Fed's going to be forced to cut the rates in recession. It would make sense. Oil reverse, then it makes sense to reverse. It should have it should be going up with the news from this morning, honestly. Unless they unless it's a belief that it's peaking. Something like that. Look how far we are away from 526. Look at that range for the day. Big range. Do you think the spy will pump at the end of the day like yesterday in anticipation of a hot PPI for tomorrow? Hot PPI would mean, you know, people think it's going to be hot tomorrow. They'd see this sell off unless they pump it up to get out of positions and then they rip that away um, post market or something like that. Um, that's what I would pay attention to. But this run up here was just probably some people gambling on it or getting out of positions at this level, selling it to someone else. Uh, this here, you got it bundled up. You have some divergence. So if that's good news, that's all I'm paying attention to for PPI. I'm trying not to be like, last one last ppi was really high so this one has to be i'm not trying to be that i'm trying to just react to the data which there was just no real opportunity for a trade setup today besides tlt actually tlt gave you a slight short right it gave you this area here breaks through this low negative territory boom you take that to the downside Yeah, I, I think Jensen's uh, Jensen's all right. He's terrible at speaking, that's for sure. But I don't think I don't mind Jensen. I would just tell you this. If Jensen's the goat, why is he selling all his NVIDIA up here in this area? Why is Jensen selling all of his? I mean, not all of it, but most of his a lot of his NVIDIA. We'll say a lot. He sold a lot of NVIDIA up in this area. So. If he's selling up here, then you'd say, well, why would I buy at the level where he sold? Now, if he's buying back, we can maybe go into the SEC filings and see that. If you went wild with bonds, what do you mean by what does wild with bonds mean, though, Richard? I know she's just printing it out of thin air. And the world does not want our bonds right now, it seems, right? Doesn't seem like they do. Really, the important thing still the spy. Starting to see weakness come in now again. Let's figure out what's going to happen here. 
Drink my pounder. Wish it was beer. And yeah, I'm a Dr. Pepper guy, right? It's just what the doctor ordered. That it's the printer. Yeah, that's the actual funny thing is, um, if you really look at it, the Fed technically isn't the printer, just Janet Yellen is, right? Janet Yellen prints bonds, and then other countries buy those bonds, and then we use that money in order to, um, to, uh, to give more money to our government for all kinds of things that uh, do not matter. We're pepper. Let's go, Peppa. I don't know how people hate Dr. Pepper. It has 23 ingredients and you don't like at least one. Uh, yeah. Sometimes Dr. Pepper just, it hits different. You know what I mean? Yep, gotta fund that war machine. We're about to see that war, so uh, we might get a period of time where we start to, I, I don't know, maybe the Fed just, you know, buys our bonds or something like that. I don't freaking know, but my God. Nice setup. EMA do you use? I use the uh, 20 EMA. And then for my simple moving averages, 5, 50, 200. What time is the Fed? They actually don't talk today. Last time they released info, they talked about it. So last time when they were like, hey, we're going to say we're not going to rate, we're not going to mention three rate cuts this time. We're going to say some. OK, we need to talk about that. We got to save the market this time. They're like, hey, we're giving three rate cuts. And I think they're expecting the market to save itself. But TLT is not buying it right now. TLT is like, nope, I don't buy it. I still think the spy will pump in the last hour so that markets won't look like a crash tomorrow, at least not as bad. That's very possible. I would just mention that um, the direction for right now is chosen, right? You're in a negative trend on a 30 minute. The direction technically is chosen. So you need to break through some some key areas here is what I would say. You need to break through. Right, that would make a lot of sense. But as we start to head lower, you have to say the direction is chosen. Maybe we want to head to this this week. Remember, we gravitate towards these weeklies. Once we get close enough to them, we kind of just gravitate towards them. So I'd pay attention to that. But something to mention here. If we end up down here at the end of this week, this is the monthly expected move. This is all that is expected from the options market for the whole month of April. And we're not even halfway yet. So if this did break through here, there's actually a 68% chance for that bounce. So down in this area might be a good accumulation zone for a lot of people. Now, if we break through that, that means April is going to be the top. Remember, we were calling for a top in April. This very well looks like a top. We've said that multiple times, that two hour divergence up here to call it saying triple top. But, you know, will the show be that simple? Will it just be CPI is bad, PPI is bad, therefore market down? We'll have to see. Let's see oil and uranium ETFs going up. Yeah, and I think the inflation plays are still here with this morning's data. Twenty-four ounce IPAs are good to pound. I actually do like IPAs. I don't like a lot of beer, to be honest. I like I like margaritas, things like that. But um, I like shots. I'm weird. But uh, beer-wise, IPA. IPAs are decent. Yeah, I come in hot. Food and energy prices still constantly going up. Very, very true. And we could just see another hot number tomorrow. And that would just cause this to escalate. I really think that would cause it to escalate. But do we, like, I wonder, bank earnings would be crazy. I mean, we don't know what they're going to produce, but how in the world would they produce good earnings? That would be crazy. See, IPA is bitter, yeah, but it's more mellow. Sour beer has a bunch of lactose in it, and sh all that stuff. So um, I know that right now it's like what hazy IPAs are huge. I don't drink hazy IPAs. Those are yeah, too much lactose, too heavy. And then it just makes you, you know, be gassy and have to go to the bathroom all the time, I think. A lot of lactose in there. Going down, Indiana. Yeah, my my buddy. I actually got him a job. He's a he's a brewmaster and stuff. So he's the head brewer at uh, at a um, brewery. He was here in town. Now he's out in uh, South Carolina, but he's very very good. 
Never had lactose was in sour beer. Uh, sour beer, I don't know. I know hazy IPAs 100% have lactose in them. That's why they're so like kind of foggy. Sour beers are another beer style that brewers love to use lactose with. Good old milk sugar. It's there. Yeah, lactose is what makes you like, you know, pretty much, I, at least for me, lactose is what makes me have to like pee all the time and get stomach aches and you feel really full. My buddy's first name is not Jack. But if anyone's near, where are they? Technically, they're near the city of North Carolina, but they're like on the border there living in South Carolina. What the heck is the city there? Charlotte? Charlotte. If you're near Charlotte, you can go visit my buddy's brewery. It's a gaming brewery, so it's like got... Um, old video games, it's got new video games, all that kind of stuff. It's kind of like a uh, gaming bar brewery thing. It's very, very cool. They have like yard games in the front, video games on the inside. It's pretty sick, very well lit, pretty place, very pretty. Canada Brewing Company in Gulfport. Ooh, see, sours, I'm just not sour. It's too much sugar, gives me a headache. Fort Mill, no, 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 it's near, sh actually, wait a second, where the heck is it? I'll look it up real quick. I'll look it up and tell you what city it's in. It's a small city. Yeah, I think it is Fort Mill, actually. There's a South Park near Charlotte. Uh, yeah, I think it is four mil. That's oh no, no, well they live in Rock Hill, but I think the brewery is in Fort Mill. Pretty sure. I gotta look up what that brewery is called. I could tell you guys. You can go visit it. Yeah, then it's probably Fort Mill. What time does the Fed speak? They don't speak today. Like I said, kind of interesting because last time they did, but that was when they produced bad numbers and need to save the market. They said they're not going to raise three times. Randy, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate you subscribing. Thank you for that. Why is the market going nuts? Because the CP CPI inflation is still high, higher than expected. Not horrible, same as last time, but still bad you, you know you don't expect two in a row what is it it was almost three in a row of inflation ticking back up still quite a number we have beer events here that are sick where you can like go to lawrence kansas where uh, university of kansas is and uh you can try like all the breweries in kansas get together and you can try i think last time they had like 120 beers to try but there's like 40 different breweries or something like that, 35. He worked for, God, I always forget the one that's in Lawrence. Free State? Yeah, he was the lab guy at Free State before he, uh, before I got him a job here, and then he would went to South Carolina when he got a better opportunity. Uh, PPI, we can see real quick what would be considered a little hotter. They have down. It looks like expected to come in 143.7 PPI month over month. Previous was 0. 0.6, consensus 0. 0.3 and 0. 0.4. So 0. 0.6, if that comes in again, if we come in in line with that again, that will not be good news, man. That will not be good. What is that brewery called? I got to see. I got to look it up. Replay, that's what it's called. Replay Brewing Company. Or Replay Brewing. 
Pretty sick. Let me see if I find a good picture for you guys to see the room here. Oh, I can't really zoom into it. I don't have Instagram anymore. But you can kind of see. It's pretty sick. Look, they got like the old school gaming things. Good beers. He's a great brewer, by the way. He's, he's very good. Like, very good. I'm not a beer guy, and, and they make some crazy good stuff. But you see, it's pretty cool. Look at the outside there. That's where they do some lawn games out front. Uh, the, the handles are cool. Looks like little Pac-Man stuff. And then that's what the brewery actually looks like. So if you want to look it up, pretty dope. Yeah, well, go say hi to Logan for me. Beer sounds good at this point. Yeah, sometimes uh, sometimes a beer at market close is necessary. <laughs> uh, yeah, we can look at uh, what is that? It's like Tilray. Tilray. Yeah, that's it. I hate saying it wrong. Uh, that thing really dropping off here. No real structure, anything like that. You're looking for some kind of reaction. Daily is probably all you can pay attention to. This is a big reaction. So. You're testing, you're under the 200 now. Be careful, that can keep on flushing below the 200. Right now you just say, well, it's far away from the five. Maybe I get a reaction to there. If you can take that back, some good news. You're above the 200. If you reject from that five, it's not looking pretty. Just crossed on the MACD, so I'd be very careful. Remember, crossing on the MACD is one of my rules. Crossing on the MACD, earnings play, not good stuff. So this most likely will continue. Now you'd look for this point down here, 160. Now, spy looking like this by end of day, that's not looking pretty. That is not looking good. Baby mama won't let me drink much. Give her a beer too. It's good for your booby milk. Three tall boy yinglings would be awesome right now. Hey, that's what's up, you're a yingling person. That's pretty much the only beer I drink. <laughs> Lion Cross is having a good time. A lot of lines. I am not an artist. Wifey is, though. I gotta show you guys some of those paintings. I might even have her work on a uh I might even have her work on a um uh, like a t-shirt design for the trade like water shirts. I feel like that'd be good or some kind of like pull I like pullovers and sweatshirts if you didn't notice. I wear them all the time. I really like them. So, thought about making like a pullover or something like that. Drinks wine and our son is 3. She passed the booby milk stage. Damn. I'll tell you right now, Mama here at this house really enjoys a beer probably every other night. Ah, uh, yes. Let us get robes. Should we all get robes with trade-like water on them? That'd be sick, actually. Like an embroidered trade-like water. And then it just says it's just a robe. Hey, congrats. Good luck. Good luck, Willow. Trade like water, it's just a beer. <laughs> Trade like water, it's just a beer. Just, just a Bud Light with Dylan, whatever his name is, holding it. You know, that's our T-shirt, hundred percent. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a play on like always be adapting, always be transitioning. You know, today I'm a man, tomorrow I'm a woman. Today I'm bullish, tomorrow I'm bearish. Always be flipping back and forth. You know what I mean? No help for Tesla. Even gas price skyrocketing on CPI yet. Yeah, I mean, CPI was bad today. Let's just be real. It is bad. But is it horrible? Well, it came in kind of like last time. So that's something to keep in mind. This this market is also on drugs, by the way, just so you know. Like the the 
the drugs are whenever the Fed comes out and says something that could be positive, right? It's like, give me another hit. Give me another hit. All right, it goes up. But the likelihood for a bounce from this level is, oop, whoa, see some buying there for a second. You see that bar? Ouch, him or her pronoun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just, I don't get into that kind of stuff. James, man, cocaine is a hell of a drug, my friend. CPI not so bad if you don't spend money. CPI is actually great if you're uh, really rich and have oil companies or something like that. My buddy, my I know someone who owns a construction company, and um, the only struggle he has is finding more workers because they have such a uh, high demand still and uh, everything's so expensive. My aunt wants to redo her kitchen. She just wants new cabinets and granite countertops and some paint. It's going to cost $60,000 was the quote. $60,000 for new cabinets, a granite countertop, and some paint. CPI. <laughs> CPI not bad if you just don't look at it. The funny thing is... Um, like, if you just stayed away from CPI, like, if you just stayed away from this week, it's just hard because they're data dependent. Yeah, if you're a landlord, right? We we actually had an experience like that. My wife, when the the, the raises were going insane, she still lived in a uh, rental and um, at the time. And uh, she, well, also, my aunt's just, like, rich. She doesn't, I don't think she knows as much about, like, money. And how to like wait like i talk to people all the time <laughs> and they're like i'm putting in a new deck and i'm like well you know it's like the most expensive time to put in a new deck right there's like labor everyone wants this stuff and then also the inflation of that those items is so high material inflation and i was just like if you just waited a year you'd probably pay half and they're like no nah, we want it for this summer i'm like man you do not think like me I have the opportunity to go see Messi this weekend, and I'm not going to go to save $600. Probably more than that with beers and gas and all that. Probably like a thousand bucks at the end of the day. But, And I was a semi-pro soccer, you know how much that would be awesome. But whenever I watch a soccer game, I'm like, man, I could be out there. So it kind of hurts my feelings a little. Oh, yeah, but I'm just saying the material cost alone, Joe, is like insane right now. Therefore, I'd be like, OK, wait a year. You're probably going to pay half of what you're going to pay for materials. And then you just got to worry about labor. What is the thought for PPI? Well, if it follows suit with the CPI, then it's going to come in similar to last month. Um, and that would just tell you, hey, 0.6. Point, if we get a reading of 0.6, Soulseer, thank you so much for joining us. If we get a reading of 0.6 of uh, these rates are going to go nuts so if you are following this channel you're paying attention to tlt just have your stop in place look at that it's starting to turn back down not reacting to that hey we're gonna give three rate cuts uh mentioned there so this thing can just keep going the demand for bonds right now is low we we have a messy at home it's called My Baby's Diaper and the Stock Market right now. Yeah. You know, it'd be sick. Someone needs to make a... Is there... Okay, wait, wait, wait. Someone probably knows this. And I know it's silly. I'm probably asking. But is there a three times leveraged inflation ETF that I don't know about that I've never searched for? Inflation expectation. Ugh, I hate ones that look like this, though. I even have it on my watch list here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I knew I was looking at that at some point. Will Apple break 167 support? Well, that's a good question. 
Uh, right now you're flagging out. You could head lower. You do have divergence here. So if we get a positive move, uh, you probably need to come above this high here to break this little downtrend you're still in. See that? Just kind of draw yourself up. You said attack on Israel is imminent. What do you think the market will react? Well, then that would possibly, you know, cause TLT to pop off. Actually, people might run to safety. That's all I would say about that. Uh, attack is imminent. It was supposed to happen by now. It was already, the, the attack was supposed to happen by now, which I thought that was funny. Like Iran saying, we're going to do it in the next three days. Israel like, all right, let's prepare for the next three days. <laughs> Fake panic mode. Yeah, that might be true. NVIDIA, very positive, still holding up at higher levels. Like I said, this is not breaking down. So if you can't break down, you're probably going to go up or flagging positive territory. AMD starting to look like it might base out down here. You know, one thing I might do. One thing I might do. No, AMD, I already looked at the options for AMD. It's, it's cheaper to try the TLT play. VIX is saying, you know, it's actually coming down, right? Still coming down here. If we cross on this 30 minute, you can start that negative trend again. Do something like this, this wonky stuff going down. Uh, the two hours still crossed. Did that cross up? Yes, it did. So you had potential here for that to just pop off right as that event was happening, right before the event we crossed. So it's like, okay, volatility has a chance to pop. Nothing burger, right? Just nothing. So... Um, I think we have a good shot of seeing some upward price action as long as PPI doesn't ruin it. So that would just tell me the VIX might drop off like this, come and fill this gap, and then I think we might go again. My opinion, at least. Hopefully that's good for you, Joe. But th here's one thing, Joe, about volatility you really need to keep in mind. We're above 200 still. This is what needs to happen. You have to remain above the 200 to keep that crash going. If it's going to crash, this is a good sign, but the 50 needs to creep above. So the reason this is bad that we're holding above the 200 is because it's allowing this 50 to slowly creep up every single day. And then one day that's just gonna take off. One day this is gonna take off, the 50 is gonna cross, it's gonna come down for a dead cap bounce. People are gonna think that it's going to go back up and then it reacts off that 50 and just keeps going. That's how that's usually the behavior of the VIX um, in bear market and stuff like that. Yeah, you can wait for 13, but all, all you have to do is really just look at the two hour. OK, if this crosses down, if this crosses down. OK, now tomorrow PPI is bad, crosses back up and you break through this probably means we're in for some kind of flush. I just sold to open AMD. 165 puts expiration this Friday. Take advantage of the high volume. Okay. So you're on the, wait, you sold to open AMD. So you sold puts. Oh, I'm on Apple. Sucks because April is supposed to be such a good green month too. Yeah, uh, just how the technicals look. The, you still could. I'm, I'm telling you, you can still have a good April out of this. But I thought we were going to find a top by the end of April. Right now, you'd say, hey, this look pretty toppy. We're going into a negative trend on a two hour. That's the recipe for disaster right there. But what if this just curled up the rest of the month, right? The month doesn't expect much more selling, right? Actually, it makes a lot of sense in an election year like this with this crazy upward price action to kind of move sideways. Do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. Like it would make a lot of sense to do that as well. Took the 1.6k profit on the Tesla puts. Well done, Steven. That's what I'm talking about. Trading like water out there. Volatility. Volatility. It's Vola. V O L A. Wait. No, no, I'm crazy. <laughs> yeah, Paul. Uh, volatility still remaining higher above that that 200 up here, uh, not on the two hour on the daily. So just keep this in mind, guys. You still need to be cautious. Even if we see an upward move here, what if this just briefly comes down and gets right back above it? So you're getting tighter and tighter, right? You're still getting tighter and tighter from all these upticks, uptick, uptick. Uh-oh, wham. That's when you really got to pay attention. Now I feel like I made fun of Paul. I'm sorry, Paul. I wasn't trying to make fun of you, man. I just like to joke around. Brightens my day to see you in here, bud. 
Now, now I'm kind of convinced my ADHD brain that I spelled volatility wrong for years. No, that's right. Because I always say volatile. Eighty-nine fifty, please. Yeah, and that very well could be the case. Um, eighty-nine fifty, looking like. Remember, we were saying eighty-nine fifty, ninety, something in there. Eight, eighty-nine to ninety. Uh, I'm not able to take my stop out just yet. I'm doing this wick. Don't take my stop out. Just start to go, please. Please. All right, guys, here's the crazy part. What could we say in the chat that makes all of our trades make money right now? What is the energy we could put out into the world? It can go all the way up to 94. What is What could we say? What alert do you said catch on an NVIDIA run like this morning? Um, NVIDIA, well, so I'm one of those guys. I don't set a ton of alerts. I will if something like crazy is happening, like uh, something like that. But uh, for NVIDIA, the only way you know to get into this is like, okay, maybe a 15 minute you look for an entry here. But overall, it's just we knew that that weekly expected move is here. This is the benefit of being a part of the Patreon. We know that weekly expected move is here. This is all the options market expected. Some people literally see a move outside of this, buy it, and then we'll see if it can get a move to here by end of the week. And guess what? That's exactly what ended up happening. So pretty much once you see this curl back up, retake 841.46. Remember we said that's a very important level. What do we do? We retest it and we come back up. Well, really your entry would probably be some kind of retest here, curling back up. Okay, it goes. I would say though, Really, you want this to make another stronger move, I would say. I, I think your real entry is going to be when this two-hour curls up. Guess what? There it is. Okay, now we can start to move up, possibly go into a positive trend over the next few days. So it's just me. I'm not messing with NVIDIA. It's moving to... It's, it's just it's trickling down, but to catch these moves would have been better when we're closer to the center line. Now that we're a little deeper... This move could fail at any moment, right? We could just do this, fail. We could do this, fail. We could do this, fail. So I'm not going to mess with this. AMC. Oh, God, do we have an ape? Key, ba key bank, are you an ape? Yeah, I, I think if you're watching videos that say games, your GameStop or uh, AMC can go to $100, I would not watch those videos right now. Now, we do know IWM was the one lagging behind still. We talked about that. And, it, you know, anything's possible in a market like this, especially if there's heavy shorts on it. I'm the, I'm the official monkey leader. That's what's up. So maybe you can inform us about that stuff. But um, uh, Johnson & Johnson. Ooh, Johnson & Johnson, look a little rough on the two hour, looking a little rough all around. See, like this one is a great one to just swing trade to the downside. This one's a great one. Uh, you can literally see this beat up, test that 200 on the two hour. Guess what? Crosses down right here. If you wanted confidence and you want to wait for that to go slightly negative, well, look for when this crosses through here again on the RSI. Look for when it crosses on the MACD position here. Guess what? You know, negative territory that's going to flush flushes. So good swing trade to the downside here. Oh, yeah, we can look at clean spark. Not the best look in the world. You want you could probably get a reaction just from a support standpoint right here. Get some kind of head and shoulders. All of this is good liquidity, so we might get a little fight here for a little bit. Get that big right shoulder. That would be cool. Uh, not too much to go off of here, though. 30 minute, going to be wonky with those divergences. About to get center line, so I'd say if that support can come in, this is right where you want it. Looks like some upside looks a little juicy here. Just want to make sure on the daily we're not doing anything crazy. Okay, so we're right at that 50. We keep getting rejected from that five-day moving average, so... If you see positivity for a few days, well, this is going to curl up into positive territory. So as of right now, maybe a four hour is actually what you want to look at. See if this can curl up. That would be a take a chance on this and then just make a quick buck. And I would just not play around with it because you have a way down here. 
Apple still showing weakness there is TLT busting through. Four hour. What are we doing? Don't take out my stops. Uh, J and J support to be exact on that is pretty much right where you're at. By the way, one fifty, but daily side. Oh wait, no, sorry, I'm looking at a different one. Um, support on this, you're you're really breaking through. I mean, you'd want to. I mean, this area is important. If we drew a box right here, all the way across, look at this. Not the best box in the world, but you got some tops in here. You got some tops in here. You got a range in here, so you could be that range. I would say you're you're right at where we could find some support in here. Say something like that. So you're breaking through where I would see the support level. Right now, you'd say next one maybe is at this closing here. Somewhere in this area. That's pretty much your little box. Volatility, are you creeping up again? Look at you. Israel threat's getting real. Has anyone heard of the Iran e-bomb six months ago? Or bull run. Okay, you're saying bull run. Very confident with that. Very confident. Do not take out my stop TLT. Don't you can do it. Pre market dump is fake. You really think so? We gotta be careful, guys. PPI can ruin us, right? Keep that stop there. Part of me wants to maybe even get out of this TLT play just to just to fully react tomorrow in case we see a gap down or something. But the probability of going up from here is higher, so. I'm going to trust my technicals. If I take two losses this week, that's okay. I've had about 12 wins in the last like three weeks. I am, I could, I, I knew the losses were coming. You never go on that long of a hot streak. Obviously, my fun play has never worked out over the last three weeks, but those are uh, where I'm taking hero plays. All right, DD, we're hearing you. DLT going back down to 82.50. Very well could. And guess what? I would accumulate around that area. Look at that. Curling down. Starting to violate all these divergences. But last line in the sand right here. No real support in this area too. So that is telling. We could just see these yields go nuts. And I think the Fed, this is kind of like a savior for the Fed. If the bond market just does it for them with the data, they don't have to raise rates at all. They just let the market do it. Uh, PLTR, I wouldn't say it follows um, NVIDIA really, but you know you can say it's similar. This one here, daily side, just see that rocket up before earnings. That would be interesting. I kind of thought we might head down towards 2029. Uh, but what I want to do, two hour, right? Seeing that curl over, so downside looks possible. I don't know where that would hold up. I really like this 2029 level, but I would just say if that rolls down, anywhere in here and rolls back up. Maybe I find a little divergence in here. And, and the, the good part is, guys, for things that you're trading like PLTR, if you take my course, I literally give you a way to make a range. It's not perfect, but I give you an easy way to make the range for any stock. Um, you just want to make sure to do it on Sunday and make sure you have the Friday expiration for the weekly range. That way you can see, oh, is is Palantir breaking down outside of its weekly range with some divergence? It will really help. So something you can learn in the course to really help yourself out. You can make a range for any of these stocks. Financials. Uh, I mean, they're beat down. Now, this is before any of the earnings and things like that, right? So to pay attention to there uh no two hour divergence but this is a good good beat down at this point but you have to say the trend has been broken the upside trend's broken so you're in a negative trend right we see that on the 20 or the the two hour here 30 minute well into negative territory so i would i would be very very worried if this like pops higher tomorrow because guess what you're right by this this is something you can swing trade by the way if the if this shifts and we're seeing a negative trend just watch this go up to the center line. Watch this go up to the center line here like this. Drop back down. You're going to see this break that low. But I like to do the swing trade on the two hour to see a little bit bigger move. 
Bank earnings will be good. Bankers are buying stock. Okay, there you go. Buybacks in place, possibly. I, I appreciate your live. It's more direct engagement instead of the others who do videos for clout. Yeah, I'm not worried about clout. I always tell people I'm going to do this as long as I feel that it's helpful and people are doing better. They're learning about stocks and I'm able to help in any kind of way. Can't tell you to buy or sell or anything like that. I'm just going to tell you what looks like the most probable move. Make the decision for yourself and all that good stuff. But I appreciate that commentary, that comment there, because really the goal here is just to be helpful. That's why I probably have the cheapest course on all of YouTube, because I'm, I'm not trying to make a ton of money out of you guys. I'm just trying to be like, hey, this is helpful. It's probably worth a thousand dollars, but I want everyone to be able to take it. I want someone who is working a nine to five and making 15 bucks an hour to save up $5,000 and then take my course and be able to utilize it and use it and maybe, you know, start to think a little bit differently and make their money make money. Doing lives is a good way to keep you honest. Very, very true. Very, very true. And I'm telling you guys when I lost money, I lost money today. Didn't make money today. It's not like the last couple of weeks. We were making bunches of money and then we lost money today. But thankfully, risk managed. Only lost 22% on one option trade. Not my whole portfolio. <laughs> Holy crap. I'd be shitting my pants. That has to cut rates anyways, just because the interest on the debt are unsustainable. Yeah, it goes up by, what, a trillion dollars every month or something like that, every two months. Um, cut rates anyways, unsustainable. The kicker here is that the bond market doesn't care about the Fed. They already lost credibility. Yeah, so the bond market is doing the job of the Fed, what needs to happen to actually fight inflation. And in turn, they might cause banks to fail. That's the overall thing here. So bond market is doing their job. And I think that's what the Fed wants. I think the Fed are a bunch of p-e's. You know what I'm saying? I, I literally think that they should be doing this themselves. They should have done this years ago. We would have went through a recession, bad recession. It would have been bad for two years. And then we could start to build back better, right? But now we're probably going to go through pain for what? We're going to experience a bear market maybe for five years, not bottom out for five to ten years possibly once this begins. Not cool. Not cool, Fed. All right, power hour. Now we're seeing TLT catch just barely some green. Notice I get so excited that it didn't take out my stop. Are we ever going to have a big correction? Yes, but the show goes on until something breaks because the Fed is too scared to actually fix the problem that would cause your groceries to go down a little bit in price. Instead, big banks are going to fail. We are then probably going to see some kind of crash in the market. But then the Fed is probably we're going to print money and bail out these banks somehow. And then the problem will continue. We'll go up even higher. And then eventually it will all unfold in the next 20 years. I know. I'm thinking some big crash happens now. If it doesn't, you, you bet your ass in 10 to 20 years, we're going to experience something absolutely horrible. It might be like civil war because of all this sh but the debt's unsustainable. Uh, you know, if we if we keep it going, you know, America's going to lose the power. The world's going to stop using the dollar. There's not there is no reason for the Fed to cut rate whatsoever. There's no reason for them to cut right now. You are correct. I agree with you. I 100% agree there's no reason why because we still have inflation. So you have to keep the rates higher. But I'm saying if banks fail, people lose jobs, people lose homes, that'll be a deflationary event, and then they'll cut the rates to uh, try to help out with that. And people might just run to safety. TLT might do the whole job, right? Or, or the bond market might do the whole job for everyone. The Fed literally could just be deleted, and we just we just, we just let the market do the market things. How about that? What if we just didn't go into it at all, and we just let the market do what the market does? That would be crazy, though, guys. How would we print money to give money to Ukraine for gender studies during a war? Come on. We need to know if we're fighting against men, women, non-binary. What are we fighting against? So, yeah, I think I think there was there was something in the last bill that was like five hundred thousand dollars to build 
something that was just ridiculous. And I was like, oh my God. At this market level, no reason to cut rate. Yeah, and we're agreeing with you. No one's saying they're going to cut rates today. I'm saying they're going to cut rates, uh, rates once banks fail. What they're going to do is they're going to try to keep the rates high, not do anything, let the bond market do their job for them. Then the banks are going to start to fail, and then they're going to have to cut rates, which is what they want to do to keep the problem going forever, and then they're going to bail out the banks. Pretty simple. At least that's how I see it happening. Such high bond yields. Yeah, for the U.S., it means bad things if you want to buy a house. It means bad things if you want a credit card. It means bad things for all credit. Commercial real estate is a mess. Exactly. Yeah, DD. But actually, when the rate cuts happen, that's when the market tanks, just so you know. Like that's actually the moment. It's not right away. Usually it's six to 12 months, but we can see this craziness continue for six to for like until the uninversion of the yield curve. Oh, why were you crying when they did horror stories? That's 100%. Charles Banger, you're exactly right. The only way to get back on track is to go through a reset. They went already too, uh, too far. Trillions in money printing and Fed manipulation will eventually have massive consequences. Yes, in order to pay back the debt right now, each American citizen would have to pay $350,000 apiece. Put that in perspective. Do you have three hundred and fifty thousand dollars? How about this? How many people in the chat right now have an extra three hundred and fifty thousand dollars that they would like to give to the Fed right now? Yes or no? Who has three hundred and fifty thousand dollars extra to give to our debt? Anybody? 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 Yeah, didn't think so. That's pretty much that's what's happening to you, though. Like if you're in America, you realize that's what's happening to us. Every time they go into more debt, what do they do? They try to tax something else more. Uh, do you really think taxing on cigarettes was to keep people from smoking cigarettes? No, it was to make more money because a lot of people were buying cigarettes. Why do you think the tax on alcohol has gone up and up during times where people are buying more alcohol so they can make more tax? It's literally... Anything that they tell you they're doing for a good reason, they're not. They do not have your best interest at heart. How about forgiving all credit card loans? Well, that would cause the entire stock market to crash. I mean, if you actually just say, hey, we're going to wipe out the debt, we have to reset completely and go back to the gold standard, that would pull you down. Well, let's go look where that would pull you down. Let's look. Do you know what? Do you know where stocks would end up if we actually went back to... Uh, before there was money pumping let's go look <laughs> you got to keep going for a while uh, it's probably lower than this now well, this is the spy so we'll say 46 and i'm dead serious by the way all these new companies were made with fake money with debt everything that you use on a daily basis my computer my phone my microphone my headset probably my water bottles all of those companies took out debt that was created by a bank, like not with real money. So uh, yeah, if you want to go for a reset, then you're going to have to send the stock market down to 46. In my, I, mean, I guess my opinion, but are they going to do that? No, they relinquish too much power. Yes, it is monopoly money. I don't know why I'm looking at a monthly one. We should really be paying attention to if this is breaking the bottom here. Dude, TLT is messing with me right now, though. It's like, we're going to take your stop out. Want to see something really crazy? You go to a weekly chart, draw a channel from uh, 2000 to 2020. We'll do that over the weekend, maybe. You can see exactly where we started pumping money into the system. Well, all, I mean, it's pretty easy to see where we pump money in every single time. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, hmm. Well, I'd say this big spike down. Boom, big rocket up after a spike down. Probably even here too. Yeah, start adding money in there. Let's see, right over here probably added some money in there. Uh, probably all the way, like, you literally just, you can't from here. 
all the way up to here. That's all fake. So I guess you could you could have an argument for the major money pumping came in right here. So you could say this level of about 156.80 uh, looks pretty good up here. But even during this, you guys realize we weren't on the gold standard. So even a lot of this is fake money too. Good old fiat. Honestly, I've learned more in this channel about housing market, bonds, economy, etc. Damn you schools for not preparing us. They don't want to prepare you. They want to turn you into an ant. Who's a good little worker bee? Who's a good little ant? Carrie, uh, you know, deliver the bee up. What is it? Work for $15 an hour. Go to college, but work for $15 an hour. Go to college, though. Let's make it expensive. Let's tax it. Let's put interest on that. Let's put interest on the loans that we give to students that convince them to go to college so that they can't pay for their food and house because they have such big loans. It's, it's literally just like the worst. It's literally so stupid. People took America. America was a great, great system. It's so fantastic. And like it's still regarded as good. When we were gold standard, that's where we really should have been flourishing forever. But ever since we got off of that, um, we're, we're in a recipe for a disaster. You're pretty much saying by going off the gold standard, you allow fake money to pump in. So you'll see these times where life is like fantastic. But eventually we'll go through a period of time where the party will end. Yeah, let's teach them up is down. Boys aren't boys anymore in college, right? I'm glad I'm not. I'm glad I went to college when I did. That stuff was just starting to kind of pop up, like the, all that kind of crap. But um, shoot, I haven't been to. Oof, man, you guys graduated a while ago. It's been it's been years. Boom and bust. If government is canceling student debt, why not cancel people's credit card debt too? They're not. They're not able to cancel the student debt that came out the other day. They failed. So if you voted for Joe Biden, congratulations. Another thing that he promised failed. Congratulations. And that's no hate. If you voted for him, you probably thought it was good options. You probably thought this would be good. That's perfectly fine. That's great. I vote on policy. I don't care if someone's an a-hole or what. And uh, that's how I vote. And I encourage you to do the same. It'll make your life better if you stop voting for who you like and start voting for people whose policies make sense. Just magically forgiving stuff doesn't make sense. Exactly. Sahand. Exactly. Yeah. There should be a limit to the amount of money that's out in the world. That's that's just that's just trade. If you want more money, you have to create more value. And maybe you don't want to go with gold standard. Maybe people actually come to and they just go to trade goods. But if I want more for if I want more grain from my neighbor, I need to produce more apples to trade. So we'd have to produce maybe we'd have to do some more gold mining or something like that. The whole point is we we wouldn't have to life would be simpler. We wouldn't sure we wouldn't have advances in technology, but look where these huge advances too fast in technology are getting us. When's the last time we really went back to the moon, sent people up there? Um, is social media really a good thing now? Hey, it connects me to you guys. This is great. But for every one of these communities, there's a hundred that um, are toxic and awful. Shoot, I've been looking at, so I like to, I, I used to almost, uh, you guys know, I used to be um, a streamer for comedy and stuff. And I got invited to a bunch of different platforms. One of them being, I wasn't invited to Fresh and Fit. Uh, my friend who invited me on her podcast was on Fresh and Fit, if you guys know what I'm talking about. And uh, that would be an example of a terrible, toxic community. That's awful. Not saying their message isn't good, but they don't follow their message. And uh, honestly, they're kind of like degrading the message because they're trying to say like, oh, be respectful to women, get a traditional wife, that whole thing. And then they literally like get girls pregnant and get them to have abortions. Yeah, yeah. Did you do? Yeah, I, I saw that. And I don't watch their podcast by any means. I watch when they go through some turmoil. I love seeing it. Shaming girls is rude. I totally agree with that. That's why I did not go on those podcasts. I do like Andrew Schultz. He's I, I really like Andrew Schultz. 
Yeah, exactly. That's why they invite like scummy girls to come on there. And it's not even them. They're just they're they're part of a society that convinces them that it's a good thing for them. Why are we we're turning into a social channel? But that's what I'm saying. That's that's the overall thing. We might not have had social media if we had the gold standard. It would happen slowly. We would put value in different things. Things could be done differently. But now that we have done this money pumping, now we're advancing way too quickly. And therefore, social media is going to be toxic. Things that we shouldn't even have are being had. And therefore, it's going to make um, the world more toxic, in my opinion. Like, really be honest. Would you rather have all the crap that's going on today or would you rather like have a nice family and like like get, like imagine you were growing up a long, like a while back when we were gold standard. Would you rather have a nice family, go to work, come home, have a nice meal, maybe go out to see a movie, maybe go out to dinner, maybe go do something like that little stuff is great. OK, let's pay attention here. We're at the we're at power hour. So let's get back into stocks. I know I've, I've went on some rants for a while now. We don't need that anymore. Um, we just want this. All right, let's see. I mean, and I'm going to tell you right now, I'm pretty much living that life. I just spend time with my family. I work when hang out with you guys, but I spend time with my family. I don't have social media for the most part. I think I have Facebook maybe still um, that I check every once in a while to see how my friends' kids are doing and that kind of thing. But other than that, I don't have it anymore. So, so what's happening here? We're starting to see power hour come in. Let's see what happens. Takes focus to pull through struggles. It does. I went through a terrible time. You guys know that before I got really good at technical trading, I lost a bunch of money with my fundamental trading when I was younger. I stepped away from it. I started my own business. COVID made me lose my business. COVID made me lose my house. Um, all of those things happened to me at the same time. I even lost a girlfriend at that time, too, at the same time. And you can bet your ass I was in a terrible spot. What did I do? I found technical analysis. So you guys want to know why I love technical analysis, why I love stocks and reading charts and hanging out with you guys. It's because I went through a bad period of time when I was, what was I, 25? Now I'm like 32. I think I was about 25. So that just tells me, well, it was, it was 2020 when it all piled up at the same time, but a lot of stuff was happening till then. But I'm just saying like this type of stuff, the reason I got obsessed with it, I really liked it. I enjoyed it. I did well with it and it gave me something good for my ADHD brain. And that's why I got really good. I turned 32. No, I'm not a youngin. Nope. I graduated high school in 2010. It's true. So you guys, if, if you experienced a loss today, there's a very there's that one guy who's a uh, who's a uh, what's his name J Jank something some kind of military dude and he says when something bad happens good I was I wasn't being patient enough right oh my this stock went down good I lost a bunch of money good I was trying to do something crazy I wasn't being risk managed you look at it inward yeah Janka or Jocko Willink, something like that. Yeah, that, that sounds about right. My birthday's in August, so you guys have to be here for my birthday. It's mandatory. August 22nd. If uh, if you all could write that on your calendar. Uh, please RSVP in the chat right now if you want to come for my birthday on August 22nd. Hey, lost the house. Good. That allowed me to find this. Lost my business. Good. I'm doing something that I really enjoy now. So yeah, there, there's always benefit rsvp guys just say i can attend in the chat um that's literally my girlfriend's birthday yeah no girlfriends allowed sorry girlfriends can't attend no i'm just kidding <laughs> tell her happy birthday though for me jacko we'll be here i can attend royals game anyone want to go no okay all right guys we got only like 40 minutes left in this Pants mandatory? Nah, man. If we're if we're behind the computer screen, as long as I can't see it, you guys wear whatever you want. I'm August two. Let's go. I'm like the last day for Leos. I should have had you guys guess what my what my star sign was. I have a fly half a continent for that. Oh, you don't have to fly. We're doing it on here. 
Oh god, we're lame. Last hour pump, is it? It very well could be. Okay, let's click around for a little bit. Let me not get distracted. We've been chatting, having fun. This not breaking down. Key's not breaking down. IWM catching a bid. Might cross up. Apple! Looks like we might get this thing to cross up. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. TLT. Did that drop off? Damn it. I didn't get an alert for my stop or anything. Nope, I still got it. Still got it, baby. Oh, God. Are we going to BTC is acting stupid or what? Sorry, let me keep going through these. I keep getting distracted. Tesla. Tesla starting to get a bounce. Remember, positive territory is right above us. Be careful if this crosses up. But remember, we have PPI tomorrow, guys, also. So have those stops in place. Amazon not looking strong anymore, but it is kind of flagging here just a little bit. So we can see that extended move. We're in positive territory. So just look out. If that crosses down, goes negative, that's what we'll talk about some downside for Amazon. We got NVIDIA here. That flagging, that flagging, that flagging, that flagging, that flagging. It could start to break to the upside now. We'll have to see. Maybe that two hour is going to fully cross up into positive territory. AMD starting to catch a bit here. This one's looking pretty juicy if that can curl up. But remember, PPI tomorrow. So it might be a day to just be like, hey, let me look for a different time to trade. But two hour divergences, 30 minute divergence here. We could see a big run up, especially if banks actually produce good earnings. Banks produce good earnings. I think everyone's expecting banks to struggle. That would be crazy. Uh, Meta here looking like it wants to roll over again. So be careful with that, right? We do have a little cup, maybe handle action here. So just pay attention because if this rolls down negative territory, we can test these levels. If it goes back up, well, we're already positive. So we're expecting it to test this high at this point is what I would say. Holding strong, MU. The moo. Microsoft, speaking of Microsoft, this is one that we needed to buy up right now and it's buying up right now. Literally, uh, Amazon, or sorry, Microsoft was very close to going negative here. Look at that, very close to going negative. That would have broke you through this level. That would not be good, right? So now we're starting to buy back up. See that cross positive territory? Maybe we could even look at a daily for a sec. What's that thing doing? Yeah, coming down, maybe you create another point of divergence in this, but you see how tight it's getting. Some kind of correction at least is coming very soon. Uh, I believe in the month of April, we're going to see that top still. Now, whether that top will lead to a correction or the actual crash, we'll have to find out. It depends on the narrative of why we're going down and how dramatically we're going down. But Google here still holding firm on these divergences, actually giving you a little divergence on the daily and the near price action here. Two hour divergence as well about to confirm. But the only problem here is we're still flagging at this moment. So 30 minute rolls up positive territory, right? We're going to see another positive move here. Bears are so damn weak. I dare you to go fight one and then tell me what you think. Or 500 million in Tesla puts purchase last hour expiring end of next week deep in the money. Holy crap. That's a lot. I wonder where we're at with Max. Oh, God dang it. I always click this by accident. I'm sorry if something pops up on the screen. Conclusion, you think pre-market. Sorry, that's my, my if you can see my computer runs freaking hot. I need a new computer, guys. Who who has a who works for a computer company and can get me a good deal? I need an actual PC. I've been running a uh, this is actually a laptop, believe it or not. This is like my gaming laptop I bought years ago, and then I sold my PC when I moved, and then I moved back, and I was like, why did I sell my freaking PC? My uh, desktop, but what was I looking at? God damn it, ADHD. Sorry, this is the moment in my day where my ADHD goes bonkers, and now you guys get to experience it because we're live right now. What was I looking at? Max Payne. Oh, yeah, let's go look at Max Payne for a sec. Oof, that is a good bounce there. All right, let's see where this market wants to uh, wind up by the end of the day, or maybe looking at Friday's expiration would be better at this point. Oh, well, 420 or 525 didn't hit that. 515 for the uh, first put wall there. I'm going to look at the end of the week, though, and see what's happening. A lot of calls at 528. First call wall, 520. Then we got some puts down towards 507 for the SPY. 
QQQ. Let's see here, 451. Big calls for 451 today. So someone lost a bunch of money on that play. Um, and then, oof, for Friday, you would say that if this thing sells off, it'll really escalate. You have puts down here that are high. You have a 2.22 ratio right now for Friday on the queues. Oof, looking very put-like. Now, the other thing is, if we start to see some good news come out, those people are going to flip and we'll see some uh, short covering. FOMC result, I actually think it was good. But the bond market, not necessarily uh, verifying that right now. I actually think they said blatantly, we're still going to do three rate cuts, and I thought we'd see some kind of reaction here. But bond market is calling uh, the Fed's bluff right now, saying, nope, we have to leave it higher. That inflation data was bad. Don't try to get us to push it back up. So we'll see. If PPI comes out better, then you'll see a reaction here from TLT. Our very retail just speculating for a market pump. On the other hand, insiders just dumping. And that's true. They've been dumping this whole time. Volatility is still above the 200. About to turn down on this 30 minute. But remember, you know, PPI in the morning is all we really have to pay attention to here. Look at that pump. Now, here's the thing. Tomorrow, if we end the day somewhere around here, just know these are going to shift down. So now you're going to see like this and this. And then maybe that just goes boom. And then bank earnings saves us, right? So pay attention to that. But uh, if these start to shift down, not a good sign. But you are curling up. You got divergence down here. A potential for a bounce here is possible. I'd like us to be at the weekly uh, expected move to get that solid bounce, get to get some more probabilities there. Ed lies. No, sh of course they do. Just know they're lying. They're even saying we're not lying in your land. Oh, yeah, let's go look at uh, Exxon again. Ooh, a lot of divergence up here. So 30 minute, you can see this rollover. But this is a super strong move still, guys. Super, super strong. If you're trying to get in on this business, uh, you'd really wait for a beat down at this point. The, you know, the point to get in was you cross the 200. Okay, cross the 200, ride the five. Just ride the five all the way up. It's literally that. It was that simple for the inflation play. Cross the 200. Now you're confident that's going up. Now you'd most likely be looking for a pullback here. Get close to the center line. See that go up again, maybe with earnings, right? So we see something like this happen. Then you can buy yourself some room. I'm not going to jump in a position at this point. The dollar dumping. Dixie dump. Why did that sound weird when I just said that? I'm sorry about that. Nothing is moving based on fundamentals, just speculation. Also, the level of margin debt in market is very, very scary. Yeah, we, we talked about the the fact that if we actually took all the debt out of the market, the, the SPY might be at, what, 159? Or if you consider that still having debt in the market at that point, because that was back at, what, 2020 levels uh, with the dot-com bubble, well, then you'd say, actually, the fair value of the stock market right now might be $46 for this buy. Yeah, we can look at Micron. Let's forget the tickers, guys. I know it's MU, but I was scared that it wasn't. So if the two-hour curls up, positive move most likely coming for Micron. I'm just going to say that. Do you have anything to get you to enter? Well, you have a bunch of little divergences down here. So Micron looks like it wants to push higher. I'm just saying, Micron looks like, you know, it has divergence. Wait, see if that can go positive, right? If you take a position, you know, make sure that's going positive and then this two hours curling up. You can be pretty confident here. It's going to test this high. Maybe even go make a new one if we see some good news. If we get good news with the PPI tomorrow, a lot of stuff's going to pop to the upside, not drop to the downside, just so we're clear about that. Now, TLT going to close on the end of the day down there. That won't be good, but we have our stop in place. That's not good. That's not good. That's all bad. Oh, look, hitting my target.
Uh, if you want to say spies trading in a range, it could be at this point. But um, sideways price action makes sense for the next like even month. Um, right now, still looking pretty sturdy as a top up here with that triple top. We'll have to see what comes from that. How can PPI be good with all commodities? Well, <laughs> well, let me show you something. Let me show you something. And I agree with you, by the way. I agree with you that PPI should be bad at this point. But I'm just saying this. How did CPI only come in at 0.4 month over month? How did core inflation rate year over year only come in at 3.8? <laughs> how did inflation rate month over month come in at 0.4 it's like they literally just copy and pasted last month and then they were like oh yeah but we'll get we'll show it's ticking up a little bit so that they raise those rates for us and the fed doesn't have to do anything right so so how did all of this come in just pretty much the same as last month when we just had crazy increases in inflation oh god it's called the books have been cooked, and your boy, Fed Jerome Powell, must be some kind of Gordon Ramsay. His name is Jerome Powell Ramsay. Like, I'm with you, T.A. Chang. I'm just saying, the numbers will be cooked in some way to not seem as bad as it is. Bitcoin dumping. Oh, golly, what's gold doing then? Gold selling off. Bitcoin. Bitcoin's not dumping. Bitcoin's up 0.58. Bitcoin's about to curl up on this four hour, maybe. So, dumping. We have a pattern within a pattern. It's like Inception. They can make manipulate the inflation, but they can't manipulate the real damage it is causing. Yes, but they can keep gaslighting and saying that it's not causing damage. Yeah, have you not heard? Have you heard Jerome Powell come out and be like, "Man, people are really suffering from inflation," or does he come out and say, "Jobs look great, inflation's coming down still consistently, and we're working towards our two percent." Jobs look great. You can even have four or five of them just to pay your mortgage. It's great. Like, he never says what's actually bad. He'll say, oh, there's some pain at the grocery store, but that should go away. Transitory. Yeah, that's, that's why I said I want to look at gold. I was like, you know, someone's like, Bitcoin's crashing. I'm like, let me look at gold. I think people are using it for a hedge. Figure people would eat them. <laughs> Review. <laughs> You're like, yeah. Uh, what's on the menu? Jerome Powell Ramsey. He's a good cook, so he must taste good too. What does he speak again? I want to go so I can tell him the same thing that I told that one purporter. How about you just go yell at him about climate change? Let's just all go to a meeting and yell stuff about climate change. Just really distract. Get him to cuss at us again. That'd be fun. I'm down with that. Sorry, I got the hiccups. And a burp. Don't, don't pay attention to it. I had homemade... I'll call them Ecuadorian tacos today. Wifey cooked. It is Powell's job to keep calm even if behind the scenes or behind the screen it's on fire. Yeah. The bond market's doing the real job right now, guys. The bond market is fighting inflation for you right now. Isn't that crazy? The bond market today is fighting inflation. They should make a dramatic movie about it. And that's just it, Wisdom A. It's a, it's a pretty much just a look at me, look at me, look at me. That's why I've said that about social issues too. Really, what every politician, what every person on YouTube should be talking about is debt. The uncontrollable, unsustainable debt that we are going into and the fact that we keep coming up with more government jobs and not real jobs. I mean... It's just ridiculous. That's what we should be talking about. 
social uh, stuff is what's being talked about the most because that's what they want to distract you with. They want you talking about your genders and all that crap. They want you talking about all that stuff to keep you out of the loop of what's happening. Do you know when? I think we talked about this. Do you guys know when all these conversations, what president was in when we started talking about gender and race all the time and pay gaps, women's rights, all this, even though women literally have the same constitutional rights as everyone. I'm I'm just saying, like, do you know what president it was? We talked about this before. Obama. It was Obama. So people think that Trump is the most polarizing president of all time. It is actually Obama. Obama started to bring forth all of the race stuff, um, all of the this country is racist and, uh, you know, we need to support and give reparations, all that stuff, gender stuff, you know, all that kind of stuff. That is to distract you because when he was in office, we were having Occupy Wall Street. We were having the people actually fight back against the government saying this debt is uncontrollable, unsustainable. Right when that happened. He started to throw out all this social problems so that now we talk about that. Really, we should be talking about the debt crisis. We are we are in an uncontrollable path, and we were on that path back then, and the people were fighting against it, saying, get rid of this. Now we're all distracted by who's doing who. Who cares? Go do whatever you want. It's America. Do whatever you want. You don't have to make it some big spectacle do whatever you want and i'll do whatever i want as long as you don't try to change the laws we all follow the same laws you do whatever you want i do whatever i want and then we actually talk about things that matter like a debt problem with our entire country that could put us into a collapse and cause civil war and put us into a serious depression Men don't get abortions either. Zimbabwe went gold-backed currency. Big problem they have is banning the t- TikTok, avoiding the debt problem. Yeah, we got to be on TikTok, but we have a huge debt problem. Let's put more money towards that. Who cares? Let them use TikTok. Just whatever. I recommend everybody read Changing World Order by Ray Dalio. Oh, Ray Dalio is pretty good. How much do you put in... TLT at a time. I'll buy a few contracts. Like I said, I'm holding it long term. I bought it at 8250. I'm holding it long term for some kind of bounce. I would just tell you this. It doesn't matter um, how much you're trading right now. Maybe I buy 10, 20 contracts. I'm keeping things small uh, just because I'm trying to make little bits here and there. I'm not trying to do anything too wild, right? But What I'm overall stating with this is I'm just making an amount of money where my risk is managed. I won't lose a bunch or anything like that. And then also I can play this long term. See that go up like that. Be good in a few days. Be out of it. I'm still trading like water. But yeah, I would say the more important part isn't how much you're spending. Right. In trading, a lot of it is I could have $100,000. You could have $1,000. It's not so much about how much you're trading with. It's your strategy over time. So I would say good habits would be don't try to do an expiration that's the next day or in three days when you see a setup. Give it two weeks. You'll see wonky price action. You might have to scale in a little bit. Maybe that reaction happens the next day. Guess what? You still make, if you get a good reaction, you still usually make 50, 100, or 150%. So it's not like that. Uh, But if I would put $100,000 behind this trade on TLT and I lose 22% like I did today, I would lose $22,000. You could bet your ass I'm not putting $100,000 behind TLT right now. Just buying about 10 contracts. At, I don't know what the price point is. I'd have to go look. I don't even have it up right now. So I had, here's what I'll tell you. you. This, This will be good. I only had like five contracts here. That's why I wasn't too worried about it. I was open to a big dip. Five contracts, sell off 22%. Okay, whatever. I take that risk. Now I'm taking the risk again. I'm taking the the, the trade again, but I'm going to buy 10 contracts because it's even cheaper. Chinese, uh, hold on, CMG will be my next heavy short. 
Sorry, I saw heavy. Oh, freaking Chipotle. I mean, yeah. Now you got to be careful. Uh, what if we make the handle and head up? But I mean, if you get divergence to confirm here on the two hour, I'd say, hell yeah. You actually had divergence here. Led to this pullback. This is a great little trade. Now, maybe you want to find an entry point with your 30 minute. Okay, 30 minute. No divergence yet, so no real entry point here. You have divergence across this way if it can go up, but I would look for that entry point with the 30 minute. If the two hour is going to actually cross and confirm, you have a good shot for that to go negative, so it'd be a good longer term option play. How does TLT correlate with the market? Um, in general, you would want to say like, okay, yields going up is usually bad for the market. Yields going down, good. Uh, TLT and the market can act in tandem actually in times like now. So you'd expect TLT to be doing exactly what the market's doing. So TLT selling off dramatically, um, those, that means those yields are going higher. That puts a clamp down on tech stocks. So tech stocks heading down today makes sense because those yields are going ballistic. But that's the point. The yields are going ballistic and we're still holding up pretty well, right? Still holding up pretty well. Really, the real reaction should be like, boom. We're not seeing that, which tells you, hey, there's there's too much bullishness in the market. They're making AI tacos. What? That's just wild. We get to watch the last 20 minutes, usually the craziest point in the market together. How awesome is that? Yeah, so it's kind of like uh, TLT and the market go through periods of correlation and negative correlation. That's the best way to describe it. DH, just subscribe. Thank you for subscribing, DH. But in a usually in a rate raising campaign, they should be working hand in hand. They should be following each other a little bit, right? The rates go up. Therefore, we're fighting inflation, which means the job hasn't been done, aka the market should be coming down and TLT will go down because the rates are going up. Thank you for joining, DH. I appreciate you. Oh, yes. Oh, you guys, I don't think you realize how much pressure the banks are under now. We're back at the levels where those last bank failures happened. Like we're we're back there. We're above there, right? We're above here now. So we are we are if you guys want to see something scary for these rates, you know, and maybe you want to think about this with TLT, the weekly just crossed up a couple weeks ago. This could literally go to the top here. This could go all the way up to 5%, and that would make sense. That would make sense is the scary part because if we actually want to get rid of the inflation, you need that to happen most likely. So this is Right, we came in, these got a little tight. Now it's expanding to the upside. What if it just stretches it? What if it just keeps going? So TLT, you gotta check on the weekly. That did cross over last week, so be a little careful with that as well. Shorter time frames look all right though. Joe Angsman, thanks so much for subscribing. Appreciate you being here. So, you know, someone came in and said we could see TLT head right back to 8250, somewhere where we were talking about a long, long time ago, right? We were talking about 8250 around this area right in here. Boom, we get there. My buy gets filled and boom, now we're looking good. Now, will this be an ABC up or are we going to see this fall back down to 8250? Very well could. Well, negative territory. So on the weekly side, you'd be like, hey, that's why I'm saying like we're going to trade like water. We're still trading like water. We're flipping back and forth, moving around the rocks. If I make money out of this next trade, I'm going to be out. I'm going to be out and I'm going to keep my long hold. Why are you live now? Aaron, uh, we just went live to see the reaction from the FOMC minutes. You're still low. Maybe tomorrow's news with the uh, PPI really scares people out. But look at that. We are, hey, whoever said move sideways. Well, we've done that pretty much all day after the first drop. Now we're going a slightly cross up here on the 30 minutes. See if we see anything from that. You know, the last... 30 minutes of the market, last hour of the market really faked us out. Now is this similar behavior? We'll have to see, but take it with a grain of salt. It, you got to see what the PPI data is.
Hey, Enam, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for subscribing. I appreciate you. Remember, we're going to break down all the stocks. We're just going to watch the spy for the last 15 minutes here. Yeah, so that's what you were talking about. You were like, if they want to hurt the options the most, everyone loses money if we just sit and go sideways the rest of the day. I would say even the put side loses money if we like end right at 515. <laughs> the put side will lose money if we end at 515. Not worth the risk. Hey, that's a good, I like that attitude. Not worth the risk. Thanks for all the useful info. You're welcome, Joe. I appreciate you being here, bud. And if you guys want to learn this stuff, there's a course down in the description as well. It's my course. I'm getting emails of people just saying like, wow, I have a totally different outlook on the market. And I'm like, man, I'm just telling you how I view the market and people are really liking it. And I, I didn't expect that reaction at all. So it makes me feel good that people are like, I have a whole different outlook. Trades are going better. That's that's really awesome. I felt enough for the day. <laughs> Were you the one that came in and you're like, I'm buying spy calls just to feel something? Someone said that. And I thought that was just freaking hilarious. It's also probably the cheapest course on YouTube, man. Like I said, this channel is not for me to make. I do plenty of trading to make money. I just um, it actually makes me a better trader to sit and talk with you guys. I do better on my trades now. I'm up even more. Yeah. Like I said, it seems helpful. And Dennis, thank you so much for subscribing. I see an influx of subscribers. Thank you, thank you. You have a realistic look at both sides of the market, not just hopium, respect though. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think it's very, I, like I say plenty of times, that's why we say trade like water. You have to be willing to go either way. I know that a lot of my thumbnails and stuff to the my, macro side will be like, yeah, this is not going to end well. But once we actually go into the analysis, you'll notice that it's like we can break up, we can break down. Here's how it would happen. Here's the most likely scenario. Here's the one I'm leaning towards. But they don't always play out. I think I got like 12 in a row in the last three weeks. And then this was my first big failure, right? NVIDIA not crossing on the two hour might have been one a long time ago, but never crossed. So we we never even took calls on that. But this was probably my my first big no, no. But that's okay. We, you know, CPI is fine. As long as you have your risk managed, stops here. Everything's cool. You like the late afternoon chat? We, we might make it a thing. Maybe every once in a while we'll, we'll skip a, if there's no data or something like that, maybe we could make one day of the week in the afternoon instead of at, um, in the morning. We were thinking about just doing a Friday close stream for Patreon only. But I really like my Fridays, guys. I don't make a YouTube video on Friday. I make it Saturday morning, and it gives me time with the family. So, When FOMC released, it's already released. They said three rate cuts, but the bond market is not buying that at this point. Now, here's the crazy part. They said three rate cuts, okay? They said three rate cuts. The market is kind of liking that a little bit. TLT not buying it. What if PPI comes out flat or under tomorrow and TLT is like, or bond traders are like, all right, they ain't lying. We could have three rate cuts now and boom, just pops off. Could happen. Weekly scale though, TLT looks awful. So this is a short term play still for a few days. An end of session stream would be nice. The only problem with the end of the session stream is it's pretty much like worthless to come watch the YouTube video at night at that point. Sorry, got to got to stay. Ooh, ooh, crossed on the 30 minute. Wow, it's almost like divergence confirming to the upside. Uh oh. But remember, this all rides on right right now. The technicals are telling you the uh, momentum here died out a little bit. But if we get bad news, it does not matter. If we get bad news, it does not matter. So PPI has a lot. We have a lot. The market has a lot riding on tomorrow's PPI. You're a market encyclopedia like your realistic view too. Yeah, uh, that's what happens when you become absolutely obsessed with markets. You have no girlfriend and you're experiencing uh, lockdowns from COVID for like two years. 
Yeah. And then also it helps like I'm just very interested in it. I have ADHD and this is something that helps me focus and I'll do this and I'll be like, oh, the spy research that for an hour. And then I'll be like, oh, TLT is moving. Let me go research that for an hour. Pretty interesting. But even the VIX, I researched that forever. If CPI is high, won't PPI be high? I'm going to tell you this. I, I We've had people say that today. I understand the thinking. I agree with the thinking. I know PPI was really hot last time, so I understand the thinking that it's hot. But I'm going to tell you, I think today's CPI was much worse than it was actually printed. I think we're still being given false numbers that just keep us in a gray area. Don't you guys feel like you're in a gray area? Doesn't it feel like we're splashing around in the pool where we just barely can't touch the bottom, but we have to like keep bouncing on our toes? Not ready to sink yet because it's not deep deep enough. Not ready to, uh, you know, walk around because the water's too deep. It's just deep enough to where we can't stand. So we have to just bounce on our toe to stay afloat. That's what it feels like. So, so what are they doing? They're keeping you in a gray area until it's kind of like this. You guys remember in uh, the big short when all the stuff started to go haywire. And then there's in that movie, they show the point where they were trying to sell their plays sorry this is blocking they're trying to sell their plays what is the banking system doing what are all these places doing they're trying to get the problem to where it wouldn't hurt them as much and then sell to you i think i think we're in a gray area and they're trying to uh make sure they aren't screwed before something really bad happens but that could go on for another year What's the options got for the rest of the week? Well, if you zoom out a little bit, the options market is telling you we could go on the SPY all the way up to 528.74. Or right now we're in a downtrend a little bit, right? Coming down on this uh, MACD here, negative territory. So, or we could head down to 508.12. And if you need those for the queues as well, we can pull those up real quick. So for the queues, the options market, look how big this move was and we didn't even touch anything. That's crazy. Um, 451.33 451.33 for the cues to the upside and 429.61 to the downside. This is literally what the options market's telling you, by the way. This isn't made up by me. Oh, yeah. Have you? Did you just see the thing with NVIDIA and how all AI was running the warehouse? AI created the video. AI did everything. I was like, where's the people? No people have jobs now. Are we in the utopia? <laughs> So yeah, hottest trades. I hope that works. That's just what the... And then if you want these for individual stocks, my course teaches you a way to do it on Robinhood uh, for a pretty good range. It works. I've used it before. It works pretty good. Uh, And then if you want the exact range, you just got to look up the calculation or join Patreon and uh, we'll give trade setups on there. I'm trying to refrain from posting trade setups right now, especially after the TLT one we did. Just because that's why I didn't want to give Apple either um, on Patreon, just because we have so much data that all those trades can just go out the window. It, you know, technical side doesn't matter. If PPI comes in really hot, we're probably going to see a major sell off. Artificially keep us long. And I think that's that's the big one, too. That's actually a great way to put it. I like that. Artificially keep us long. Keep us content. People are much happier in a bullish stock market. But it's so funny how the stock market and the economy just do not relate to each other at all. The economy's in the shit and everyone's crazy and has three jobs. Even me, I have to, like, technically, I have one, two, three jobs, technically. I work for a startup. I do, you know, education videos and educating with my course. And I trade. So technically, I have three jobs. Being near indices all time high is more bullish than bearish. Yeah, and that's the that's the overall thing. It's like they they keep a it's very uh they like people to be bullish because then people are happier, right? Your account looks pretty good if you're a if you're a millionaire with a bunch of stock in Nvidia right now. I know a guy that has fifteen million dollars in Nvidia right now. I know another guy that has five million dollars in Nvidia right now. You think they're really happy? Well, maybe not lately. They might have to sell a little bit, but what if that thing goes up to a thousand? You think they'll be happy? Yeah. Then what if that's all ripped away? That's the thing. It'll flip. 
I prefer a bear market. A lot of skill comes in a bear market. That's why I like it. Like Apple for the print tomorrow. Yeah, Apple looks like a good opportunity still possibly here from a momentum perspective. But just know this is still flagging, by the way, too. Like just don't be don't be convinced that this has to go up from here. This is still flagging. You can drop again. You haven't even gone to the weekly expected move for Apple yet. You leverage your fundamental skills. I think fundamental skills are um, something that actually hurt me in the past looking at individual stocks. The fundamentals that I want to know is what kind of reading of a CPI is bad, what kind of reading is good, what how how to understand how the Fed is talking. What does raising rates actually do? What does that do to mentality? Psychology is something very good to study. I got I was obsessed with psychology. Actually, my high school teachers wanted me to be a psychologist. They messaged my parents and said I should go into psychology. Um, so doing stuff like that will help you a lot more than being like, oh, this the Warren Buffett way of things just doesn't doesn't fully work anymore, to be honest. And also Warren Buffett is mentioning Apple a lot less, selling a lot of positions in Apple. Like I said before, insiders and big institutions are getting out slowly. They want to make you believe they are buying, but just doing at their actions, not by their words. And I believe that 100 percent. We've gone through the insider selling. Um, that's why, you you know, we can praise uh, your boy Jensen over at NVIDIA all you want. But he's been selling a lot of NVIDIA stock over the last month or two. Okay, let me see here. How often do stocks hit the weekly expected moves? All the time. Literally all the time. Not even that. Daily expected moves. Do you know? Uh, so if your daily expected moves get hit a lot too. This right here hit a daily expected move. We saw a bounce. This right here hit a daily expected move. Now we bounce. NVIDIA hit the weekly. So you said, does it hit? NVIDIA hit the weekly expected move right there. That's it right there. You can get those moves on Patreon, but right here is that weekly expected move. Bounces from that level. So it's a very, very useful tool, especially for profit taking, I would say. I, I I don't even know what Vision Pro is, and if it's the Apple thing, I'm not doing it. I'm not going to do anything that changes the world around me. I have this, though. Guys, I should do a stream. I'm actually really good at Beat Saber. I, I don't get to play ever. I just played for the first time in like six, like four months. Risk assets, other assets, move stocks, crypto, up, down. Um, yeah, and, and pretty much it's like, okay, so the options market priced in that this would come down here. So this is most likely where buyers are at. This is most likely where even the market makers themselves will start to get rid of their short position and maybe go long. That's what I would say. So you're just getting in with the crowd, the the big boys. Like the market maker wants us to go up from this level, so I want to go up from this level is kind of how I see it. Let's look. Four minutes left. What is the spy going to do? Beat Saber plus TA. <laughs> Imagine it's just dead silent. Are the stocks going up? Last five minutes, buckle up. Let's see it here. Four minutes left. Uh, didn't they? Uh, the the target for Nvidia was just lifted to a thousand. Apparently, also. Oh, Paracos. I didn't read your message. I meant to. Up fifteen hundred today on MU calls. Glad I left Nvidia though. Good job. Good job. Trading like water. Trading like water. Don't be insane. Don't think Nvidia has to work out for you. Right. Just be like. Screw NVIDIA. Let's go to Moo. Good job. Like it. Like dice. Get a, uh, get a nice flush back to 450. 50? Could happen, Ken. Are you talking about on which stock? Talk about the SPY go to 450? The lack of movement seems bearish. Well, that's the hard part, Chang, is like, Every single time, even if we heard a good thing today, we have more news tomorrow. If we hear good news tomorrow, we have more news on Friday. If we hear good news in the morning on Friday, we have earnings. It's like there's always the next thing because we're dependent on data.
back onto an offer options to each of bond securities stocks in the dollar. Um, and the bond market might just blow up because Janet Yellen is just, oh my God. might just blow up to fight inflation. I mean, yeah, it just looks awful all around. Oh, hold on. Dog's barking. Hey, I don't think you're far off, JS. I think you're pretty, uh, pretty spot on thinking that. Some kind of big shift is coming. If it doesn't, then in about 10 to 20 years, we're going to experience something way worse. We're going to be in a worse spot than now. The stock market will be a, even higher. We could, you know, potentially if we don't deal with the hyperinflation problem, you could see the stock market almost like double in price over the next 10 years. Sounds like a big dog. Yeah, I got two big dogs, one little one. I have a Husky German Shepherd Lab Beagle that looks like the Dogecoin. And I have Baruse, who is a pit bull, who has like cool pattern in him. And then uh, Toby, he's a... What are you, Toby? A Bich Bichon, something like that. I don't know. That's, that's her dog. <laughs> that's her dog. That ain't my dog. That, that would be true, Ken. Enjoy the pounders, you betcha. All right, 259. Uh, just seeing some upwards, seeing this crossover. Remember, you do have divergence down here, so we're going to start to break stuff down as we close. Just, just note this divergence here. Take it with a grain of salt. The technicals look good. You need the good news. The good news here is if you get this to reverse from here, we get good news tomorrow. Boom, we can see a good move because you have divergences behind it. So I'll be putting out those daily expected moves um, tonight on Patreon. So no YouTube video. So we're going to do a breakdown right now. What up, Steve? How you doing, dude? So Q's here. Curling up again here. No divergence, anything like that. But curling up, can it go positive for the Q's? We're going to pay attention to our daily expected moves. Just remember, so much rides on PPI. Apple. This one's starting to break down again. Remember, this looks pretty flaggy, but you do have divergences all across here. So if we see that positive move, we can see some good upward price action. It's your dog now. Uh, Tesla, this thing, you just want to curl up for the positive side, positive territory. I think the two hour, you really just want to see if this thing curls down negative. That would be your telling factor. Like, hey, this is going much lower. Um, Amazon here, making sure I wasn't muted. Amazon here has curled down on the two hour. If that curls back up, I'd really be holding things pretty tight here. You're in positive territory. The room, there is room to the upside for Amazon. We'll pay attention to any weekly expected moves tomorrow. NVIDIA, this guy here has been flagging all day. Looks like it might want to make an ABC move up. Remember, NVIDIA can get a strong move here. This level right here, we can see a strong move. We can even see this two hour start to go positive. That's where the real strength will come. Be weary if the two hour goes like this and then just curls back down because we'll be right by that center line. You have a good shot to take out this low if that reverses. Commodities are pumping. Okay, and then AMD, this one here looks actually pretty good. Now you did, you did actually cross back down on this MACD down here, so you still need to go green. But you do have that two hour divergence down here. What that could do, you know, you want to see a blow off top. AMD could be one of the ones going to do that. It's just I, I looked at the options. It looks expensive to get into at this time. Still, even with this downer price action, calls are still like too expensive for me to do. There's other plays that are cheaper um, that I'm more confident in and not as volatile. Nothing that can pop and drop or anything like that. But if that two hour curls up goes positive, look for the daily. The daily could be curling up and we could see an extended move in AMD maybe before earnings okay so meta here this one you have a daily divergence right we talked about the daily divergence up here very very steep right very steep which means we're close to the center line if you took the course which is down in the description you'd know exactly what we're talking about right here why divergence is important and things like that but if that confirms we can see that downside looks like it's buying up so we want to see if it can head up from here 30 minute well, that looked like it was curling down for a minute, right? It looked like it was going to curl down. Did that reject? It rejected the crossing as of now, so we could see some upside. We need good news from the PPI, though. Yeah, China and Russia are using their uh, 
they're part of brick and stuff too. Uh, Microsoft here, we needed to stay above this level. Very important that we did. Two hour, is that able to cross back up and go positive? That will be telling. If we get good news from PPI, Microsoft most likely making a new high this week. So pay attention if we get a good reading from PPI. Bad reading, very simple. We're going to see those yields keep rocketing up. See stocks probably start to actually react. Um, Google here, two hour divergence in the near price action, triple divergence across this. Hasn't confirmed yet, so we can see an upward move. Daily divergence all the way across. That's your downside. Upside, what if we get good news? Well, the 30 minute here is still positive. Okay, so even though you're seeing some negative stuff, some negative momentum starting uh, or weakening in momentum starting for the two hour, 30 minute is saying, hey, I'm still positive. If I curl up, I'm probably going to go make a new high. I'd pay attention to my trend line here, which if you want that little trend line, um, I just created kind of a uh, between these tops up here, I just kept that steady the whole way, treated this as an overreaction, and we could go touch that point, I believe. So 160 could be here soon for uh, Google if we see some positive price action. Something to watch here, the VIX. Something to note, even if we see positivity, just be careful. We're starting to get in this overall you know, downward move, right? You see these pops, and we just mark those highs, mark those highs. We're about to touch it again. Now, if we start to break down, look how coiled up we would be, right? We'd be very coiled up at that point. Maybe we even want to get even further, but eventually that's going to break out and it's going to be bad, bad news. So we'll pay close attention to this. We'll let uh, we'll play their game as long as we as long as they want us to. As long as we're trading like water, we should be just fine out there. We can play their game. We're good enough. Now, one thing to note on TLT here, breaking down a lot today. It makes sense with the with the CPI where it was at. CPI coming in, pretty much how it was last month. Okay, pretty much how it was last month. And uh, that is a bad, bad thing. It's still up from all the consensus. So now people expect PPI to do the same. Don't expect anything. React to everything. Okay, don't expect PPI to come in hot. Don't expect CPI to come in hot. It's like, what if you're wrong? You're going to lose a lot of money, right? You do not know what they are going to print. And yes, I said what they are going to print, not what the print is. I'm saying what they are going to print because they could just fudge the data by this much, just a little bit. What if CPI today was actually up by 0.2 higher than what they printed? That would have seen a bigger reaction in these yields. We probably would have sold off higher. We would have went below levels that would have caused us to see that selling come in, two standard deviation moves, right? So tomorrow, the PPI could be bad, but what if it's only 0.4? What if it's only 0.5 instead of 0.6 at the previous, and then the media runs with the narrative of, yeah, PPI ticked up last month, but it's, it's started to come down according to this month. Hey, peep, wouldn't you read that as a positive thing? Just pay attention to that. All right, guys, and lastly on this video, just... Uh, PBI comes out an hour before open. So we'll be here live tomorrow morning uh, at the open and we'll be talking about that. We'll see that reaction. Thank you for subscribing, JS. I appreciate you. Dennis, everyone that's been coming in, appreciate you guys subscribing. That's awesome. Make sure on your way out, just give it a like, give it a little subscribe if you're not subscribed, if you enjoyed today's stream. And if you want to get those weekly ranges for the stocks that we're covering on this channel, and just so you know, those stocks uh, where we give the weekly range, going to be Apple, Tesla, Amazon, NVIDIA, AMD, Meta, and then we have Microsoft, Google. We give you the one for TLT as well and the SPX. So we give you all the ranges, okay? And you can get that down on Patreon. And if you want to learn more about this, a lot of people who have been trading stocks for a while, they're still taking the course because it was cheap. And they're like, wow, this actually changed my outlook. And I'm getting messages even now, just a week after they take it. And they go, my first trades are going better. So I appreciate that. Howie, thank you so much for subscribing. I really appreciate you guys watching with me today. And uh, no YouTube video tonight, but I will be posting the daily ranges to Patreon tonight. So you have them before open. If you want them and you don't want to join Patreon, I'll be here tomorrow morning and we can uh, stay on those so you can get them on your charts for tomorrow. Appreciate you guys. Thank you guys for all the subscriptions. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful night and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.